Hello, I'm Phantom. You may be wondering what I'm doing on the floor. Well, that's because I'm on the floor in real life, okay? Stop making fun of me. I'm floor gang now. It's official. I have a headache, which means I am on the floor because I need to lay down or else my headache hurts and uh, my bed's way too far away. So I just laid all my shit on the floor and put my screen on the floor and that's how I've been for like the past three days. I just wanted to make some content, you know? I don't like not making content, I enjoy doing it. And I hit 100 subscribers last night, so thank you everybody who's subscribed. I wanted to get to thank you. But there's not really a, <laughs> a lot I can do laying on the floor. You see, at least when PewDiePie did it, he could sit, you know? He could sit up and do stuff on the computer. I'm laying. You know how hard it is to like do stuff on a computer while laying down? It's not necessarily intuitive. To put it as simply as I can, I've just been kind of chilling out, watching all the uh, Hollow Live Gen 2 uh, debuts throughout the day. Uh, Bales is in 34 minutes, and I'm, you know, amping up. Not really be. <laughs> it, it's it's weird making content like this for me. Okay, I I don't usually make content like this. I know I've uploaded a fair amount of it, but I play video games. It's the only thing I feel like I'm any half decent at. I'm not, I'm not an entertainer as much as I'd like to consider myself one. But today, at least, I wanted to talk. You know, I, I, I have stuff to talk about. And guess what? I'm still a new streamer, okay? Sure, I've been doing stuff on this channel for almost two years. But I'm still a new streamer. I'm still a new VTuber. That's what I'm trying to say. My subscribers don't know that much about me. So I can talk about stuff that interests me. Um, and enjoy being able to use that as content until eventually my, um, subscribers know everything about me and I have to actually be good at video games, uh, to retain their attention for longer than three minutes. But for now I can talk about stuff that I like. And one thing that I like a lot that I've been playing a lot of lately because, well, on my streams, I play games like, uh, Guilty Gear Strive a lot. A common thing that gets me really sucked into video games is build-based video games. Games where you can actively set up your character and this isn't just video games either i like playing other kinds of games too tabletop games and such and card games i'm a big fan of card games i like games where customization is a integral part of your experience and the reason i like that as much is because i can absolutely dump time into it i can spend days straight off of a game and not even spend the days doing stuff playing a video game that's what I like to do. I mean, just naming some of them off. Dead by Daylight. I played that on stream. I reacted to Pinhead a couple days ago from Hellraiser. I love that game. I have, like, a, a notepad. that And, and to kind of go into that, I'll, I'll go into that afterwards. Actually, I'll go into that afterwards. An easier one to explain is card games. I love it when card games come up with new stuff. One of the card games that I've been playing lately that I absolutely love beyond, like, any other game... Well, I, I had a soft spot for Magic the Gathering, and I still do play it some. Legends of Runeterra has done me right. Le Riot Games is Legends of Runeterra. I will be the first person to criticize Riot Games. I absolutely hate their terrible pipelining. I hate their absolutely half-assed content that comes out in almost all of their games. Their stories are weak. The only department that's half good is art, and even then they miss out some. Legends of Runeterra is the exception, okay? Legends of Runeterra is the shining gem of Riot Games as far as I'm concerned. They have, done, the people over at Legend of Runeterra have done such a good job at balancing an amazing card game. I love playing it. I play it almost every day. And that's the other thing about it is it's one of the few card games where you're actually, you know, in given a reason to play for more than two hours every week. I'm looking at you, Magic the Gathering. I'm not gonna play your fucking online game if I literally don't get anything for playing it. Fuck you if you think I'm going to. Legend of Runeterra is great because of how much it gives you. And with getting as much as you do, I find myself able to make like new decks and shit every week, okay? I, I love being able to do that. I love theory crafting decks. I have a little bit of an, <laughs> a thing I need to admit though. As much as I say I love theory crafting decks, um, the only thing I play in card games is dragons. And it's not my fault. It's not my fault, okay? Dragons are just the most fun. They're just the most fun. Alright, Yu-Gi-Oh! I play Dragon Maids. Uh, Magic the Gathering. When I played last, I played a Bolas deck. Now I play a uh, Tiamat, okay? Because she's fun, okay? They made dragons fun. Orb of Dragonkind. Legend of Runeterra. I play all the different Shaikh combos. <laughs> I totally... 
uh, don't have a, a, a Dragon Girl, a Dragon Girl problem. I, I play, I, I was super happy with the Viego update because I absolutely love Shadow Isles dragons. I love Demacia Shadow Isles dragons, it's ridiculously fun. That's the kind of shit I'm talking about when I say I like, I like card games. I spend way too much time sitting at home, looking through the cards and thinking of what, like not even sitting at home, when I would work. I would spend all of my time at work theory crafting that stuff. Do you know how fast that makes work go? You know how nice it is having a game actually keep your attention beyond just playing it? Like, first-person shooters are fun, sure, but nothing is more fun than being able to just dump endless amounts of time into a game when you're not even playing it. I have spent so many hours coming up with decks and card games, and it's not even me playing the game, and I'm still entertained. That's what I'm talking about when I say build-based games. That translates into video games, too. Heading off into what I was going to say, Dark Souls. Okay, the Dark Souls series is one of my favorite game series of all time. I, I played a shitload of Dark Souls. Dark Souls videos are what got my old YouTube channel as popular as it did. It's what got me views. Uh, the only money I ever made on YouTube was off of my Dark Souls videos. And what I love in Dark Souls is, sure, I love the story, love the music, love how it looks, love all that. The building. I loved the level up system and being able to make builds for PvP. The only game I've ever cheated in in my entire life is Dark Souls. And that's because I downloaded Cheat Engine just to be able to clone my characters to have multiple different builds instead of having to fully run through the game every time. Like, I had too many ideas for builds. I had I had to Cheat Engine those characters in. I, I had to. I'd play the game, I'd make like 10 builds, run through the game like 10 times, and I'm like, I've got like 20 more builds over on Mu- what was the- Mugen Monkey. That was the website. I've got like 20 more builds over on Mugen Monkey that I want to try out. There's no way in hell I'm running through the game to play each of those things. I'm just going to cheat engine the characters in. That, that, that was fun. Okay? Freed's Twin Scythes are possibly my favorite weapon in the entirety of Dark Souls. And I loved the fact that it had intelligence scaling. I loved being able to mix it with souls. Because I had a problem where the only thing I'd ever play is pyromancy decks. And yes, I know everyone plays pyromancy decks. But it's the only thing I would play. I'd use scythes because I love scythes. Freed's Twin Scythes. And pyromancy. Cha like, Chaos Fireball was just too fucking useful of a side weapon, okay? If someone's keeping their distance, that shit, that shit bopped. That, that was popping, to describe it the best I possibly can. Payday 2 is another build-based game that I didn't think I'd like. I played Payday 2 back on, I think it was the PlayStation 3. They had, like, a free demo that you could try. I was like, yeah, this is cool. And then one of my friends was like, yeah, I play Payday. I'm like, oh, I remember playing that. He's like, well, did, how much did you play? I'm like, I played the demo. He's like, you haven't played Payday. And he was right. I'm a stoic machine gunner literally 24-7. I love that. I love being my team. They can run anything they want. I take the whatever it's called, inspiration. I shout at them if they get down and they get back up. I can't die. I'm just popping hip flasks. I love that. I love playing the uh, dodge build, uh, Yzma shotgun dodge build. That's ridiculously fun. Are you kidding me? It's ridiculously fun. Do you know how much time I spent thinking of weapon and build combos for Payday 2? I spent ungodly amounts of time doing that. I think that's, like, games like Rainbow Six and uh, Guilty Gear Strive are extremely fun when playing them. But that's the only problem I have with other game types, is when you don't have the character customization, I don't get bored of it. I just understand it too quickly. I know what's going on too quickly. I've played Guilty Gear Strive long enough that I now understand all the matchups, and I understand that makes it better. And I'm not saying Guilty Gear Strive is a bad game or that I'm not going to play it anymore. I'm arguably going to play it more because I understand the characters better. But I don't find myself sitting, like, when I was laying in bed with a headache. I didn't I find myself laying in bed thinking about combos that I could pull off with Potemkin. You don't get that out-of-game experience that build-based games give you. That's why I love build-based games. Uh, another example, I guess, if we wanted to talk about games that aren't uh, video games, Dungeons & Dragons does this amazingly well. I have D&D I, I have &D Beyond, okay? I have over 34 different characters, completely different from each other, that I have made on D&D Beyond that I have never played and probably never will get to. Because I spend more time coming up with characters and encounters than I do actually playing the fucking game. <laughs> and I'm glad I do, because I've gotten to spend so much time doing that. Pop in some cool fantasy music, 
and come up with characters for like 18 hours. It's so easy to just lose time in it. I'm so excited for Elden Ring to come out. I was talking about how much I like Dark Souls. I hope Elden Ring's gonna have the same customization thing. I wanna see what kind of cool faith builds they're gonna do, sorcery builds. I wanna do a cool. I wanna. One of my favorite builds in a Dark Souls game ever. Dark Souls 1 and 3 are objectively better than Dark Souls 2. Dark Souls 2 is the game that was good, but because it had the name Dark Souls in its title, it was immediately worse than the others because it just didn't live up to the standards. Rolls were clunky. They tried to make backstabs um, better by not having leg stabs, but instead made face leg stabs. The content itself felt reused. Just in general, Dark Souls 2 wasn't quite as good of a Dark Souls game as Dark Souls 1 and 3. But still to this day, my favorite Dark Souls build ever was when I took the big statue, like what do they call it? The King's Greatsword or something like that? The Ultra Greatsword that was like a statue on a stick? Uh, I took would take that in one hand. It was just a full strength build. Took that in one hand. Took the uh, the what was it called? The Ash Knight, the the tw the twin great bow, the one that would like had the two legs on each or two arms on each side, and you'd do like a cool little twirl when you when you'd get it ready. Having that in my offhand, I don't know why that was the most fun build I've ever played in a Dark Souls history, but it was. I enjoyed playing that so much more than other stuff. It was super, super fucking cool. I kind of wish Dark Souls 3 had something like that. The Great Bows, like, were okay in Dark Souls 3. It's just, the only reason I think the Dark Souls 2 Great Sword Great Bow build worked is because of how clunky rolls was. When you get rid of the clunky rolls and you have everyone fast rolling, like in Dark Souls 1, Dark Souls 3, that kind of build doesn't work. Not necessarily a bad thing, because Dark Souls 1 and 3's rolls were just objectively better. I, I put hundreds of hours into each Dark Souls game, okay? I have the right to say this. <laughs> I put at least 400 hours in Dark Souls 1 over three different consoles. And I, that's not 400 overall. That's 400 in each, all right? I played hundreds of hours of Dark Souls 3 over two different accounts. I have played hundreds and hundreds of hours of Dark Souls 2 over two different consoles. Because... My dad only had a PlayStation. He didn't have a computer or internet. So when I'd go over to his place, it was the only damn thing I'd play at his house. Going back to Dead by Daylight, one of the reasons that I've recently gotten into Dead by Daylight again is I played Dead by Daylight back in 2016, okay? I don't have the video to prove it anymore, but I had videos of me playing alpha footage of Dead by Daylight on my old YouTube channel. Back when Trapper was the only killer. And there was only like one map. I think it was Shelter Woods. I can't remember actually. Was it Shelter Woods? Macmillan Estate was the only map at the time, but I can't remember if there was more than one map. I, I've been playing it for a long time, and Dead by Daylight at the beginning had this super cool situation where you had multiple, once it released at least, you had multiple different killers, and you could set up builds with the different perks that they had going on. And while I really enjoyed it, uh, Dead by Daylight suffered from uh, living, or Dead by Daylight suffered... What's a good way to put it? As the game went on, and more perks got added in, eventually there were a couple objectively best perks, and the problem with that is it enforced a meta. When Michael Myers came out, Laurie Strode came out with Decisive Strike. When The Huntress came out, um, David came out with Dead Hard. When Bill came out, he had Unbreakable and Borrowed Time. And once those characters were all out, that's the only thing survivors played. Before then, you'd have some survivors running Sprint Burst, some survivors running Leaf, some survivors running Balanced Landing. Actually, I don't think... Was Leaf out? Leaf, Leaf wasn't the Nia perk. That was... I don't remember when Leaf actually came out. I don't think Leaf was out then. But my, my point still stands. You had people running different stuff. But the early iterations of those survivor builds with uh early dead decisive early decisive strike was stupid um dead hard has always been strong and always will be but the problem that the game had was as more content came out and these objectively better things came out one at a time the diversity that i liked in the game disappeared every single killer ran um ruin noed before it became a hex totem every single survivor ran dead hard ran decisive strike ran borrowed time and then would run like iron will or urban evasion or something like that and there wasn't like 
the game suffered from coming up with ideas that were objectively good. I think that's the best way I can word it uh, without opening up a dictionary. Because what happens when that happens is the diversity that everybody, that at least I enjoyed, disappeared. I stopped enjoying it. Once you hit like the top four ranks as killer, it's all you go against. It's, it becomes cookie cutter and boring. And I think stepping away from the game was a good thing because I stepped away from it for a couple years. Like, I kept track of it because I still love the game. Behavioral Studios does a great job at releasing content. I still love the game. But um, after stepping away for a while, when I came back, there were so many new perks. <laughs> there were so many new perks. Everybody I know can vouch for me. I spent nights after nights after nights coming up with build ideas because there was so much to work with. There were still objectively better perks, yes, but now there were more than four of them. Now, with there being more than four objectively best perks, you can actually play Dead by Daylight and see people running different stuff. It's not just the same four perks now. There are other perks that you can take without people actively flaming you. Now there's like six different best builds that you can run. And at least then, there's a chance that not every survivor will have the same stuff. Sure, you still have your four-man survive with friends take you to Lambton, or take you to Haddonfield, and um, run the same four perks that everybody runs, and they just run you in circles with balanced landing and you can never catch them. Sure, that still happens. But there is at least the chance it won't anymore. <laughs> and with killers, I have a, a word, a, a notepad open. Let me count how many builds I have on that notepad. Dead by Daylight killer builds. In this notepad, all right, I have come up with 1, 2, 17, 18. I have 18 different builds I want to try. That gives me so, incent so much incentive to play the game. Build-based stuff gives you so much incentive to play the game. If Dark Souls didn't have as good of a build-based system as it did, I would have played through the game once or twice, absolutely loved it, and stopped. But because of the awesome build-making nature of it, I played hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of that. I spent so much time playing it. Payday 2. Like, I played through every level on Payday 2. But I still repeatedly play through it because I love playing through the builds. I love the end game content that the build gives you. If you if you look at Payday and you think, oh, that's a game where you steal um, stuff and you you do heists and stuff like that, you're objectively wrong. That game's end game is a build based like what 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 hor it's borderline like Left 4 Dead because you're just going against hordes and hordes and hordes of cops. It is not a heist simulator. That is, that is a, a build-based dungeon crawler, if anything. <laughs> I really hope Elden Ring is going to be good. I really hope Elden Ring is going to be good. I've been... A, I've been enjoying... I, th I think I kind of stepped away from them for a while. But after having uh, all the shit that's going on with me with multiple sclerosis and stuff and not being able to see very well, being able to think about games instead of just it being reaction based and how much fun you have based around the game knowledge you have like with Rainbow Six or Apex or games like Guilty Gear. Being able to spend time not necessarily focusing on a screen and still enjoying a game is I think something I took for granted. And having been coming back into it because I am spending a lot of time playing card games. They're one of the few games I can actually spend time playing with without, you know, hurting. At least, hopefully, it w that won't be the case for long. Hopefully that'll change once I have, like, my uh, treatments and stuff, and hopefully I get my eyesight back. Being able to enjoy a video game um, in the situation I'm in is beyond good. I think it, it partially keeps me from going insane. <laughs> uh... I still do kind of go insane, because there are a lot of games I want to play. I can't necessarily play Dead by Daylight as much as I want to, because I lose track of stuff that I'm looking at way too easily. I can play Guilty Gear, but once I kind of start zoning out and stop focusing as hard, it, it becomes way too hard to see things. I fall for shit I shouldn't be falling for. So games like Dungeons & Dragons, card games, even Payday, because you don't have to have reaction speed to play Payday. It's a good thing. And... and I guess I just wanted to talk about it. There's nothing else to do, okay? 
this was a rambly shit fest of a video where I just talked about a couple games that I like playing and said why I like it and the things I like doing in it. What what the fuck else am I gonna do? I'm on the floor. Okay, give give me <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> I gotta make some sort of content. I hit a hundred subscribers. All right, I hit a hundred subscribers. I gotta do something. And well, maybe this isn't anything crazy or good. You know, at least I'm talking. At least I'm doing something. And it's a good way to burn time. Look. It's 5.46 my time. Bales debuts in 14 minutes. Let's go! Let's fucking go! I gotta cut off this ramble fest. <laughs> That's it. All I'm doing is just going on and on and on and on. So, uh, thanks for watching if you did. Sorry you had to plow through this, <laughs> this incoherent mess. I like build-based games. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of cool stuff to talk about, okay? They're all cool in their own right. Maybe I'll have to, you know, actually step aside and actually dedicate time to it. Maybe I'll make some, like, Magic the Gathering videos where I talk about the Magic the Gathering decks that I used to enjoy before they made them not legal anymore. Maybe I'll talk about, like, I could, I can make a video of talking about all the Dead by Daylight builds that I sat in bed over hours and hours and hours and theory crafted and brainstormed. <laughs> you know? I'm just trying not to push myself. But I hope you enjoyed. If you did, leave a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I talked about a lot of different games today. And then once I'm done with treatment, hopefully I'm going to be playing all of them. <laughs> I want to revisit Dark Souls. It's been a while since I played it. I want to make some... like, Obviously, I want to make content. I just am having a hard time figuring out what kind of content I can make laying on my ass. Okay? I'm not a big enough streamer, okay? I'm not a big enough streamer or YouTuber. I can't... Just go, oh, I don't know what I want to do today. Let me go to my subreddit. Let me, let me go to, let me make money while having my viewers just dump money into putting videos on a, a stream and then spend two hours straight watching other people's content. That's not something I can do, okay? I have a hundred subs. I, have, I actually have to think about what I'm doing before I make content.